Welcome to the Mellafella Crypto Channel. I'm the Mellafella, back to share my adventures in crypto with you. Be aware this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Also, it's cold in these crypto streets. So always, always, always do your own research. Invest no more than what you are willing to lose. Protect your things and make sure you're taking some profits along the way. Uh, before we get started, I want to announce uh, my first attempt at a live, and this is going to be uh, by way of a series that I'm entitling Porks and Crypto. And it's going to be on Pi Day. Pi Day. That's It's going to be on 314 of this year at 8 p.m. Central. So March 14, 8 p.m. Central, Pi Day. We're going to do our Corks and Crypto live series. And I'm going to be accompanied by at least one of my business partners. We own a wine bar together. And we are also investors in uh, Vulcan. So we're going to talk about wine, of course, but most definitely the discussion is going to be about uh, Vulcan, Vulcan blockchain, and uh, our plans for the future uh, as it relates to uh, what Vulcan is expected to do for us. So we'd love for you to join us. Um, the uh, We want to make it interactive and as entertaining as we can. Um, if you are a member of Discord, just hit me up in discord i'm at melafella crypto in discord and uh you know uh send me a friend request i'll connect with you and get you uh, what's needed to join us you can join uh, if you want to be uh, on video or audio only completely up to you respect that uh but uh yeah if you want to join us uh, please do that um and we will be interacting with the audience in order to interact with us uh in order to uh, comment and chat you will need to be a subscriber uh, to the channel. So uh, it doesn't cost you anything. I'm not asking for a membership, but uh, we would like for you to participate. And in order to do so, you would need to be a subscriber. So if you're not currently a subscriber, uh, please uh, consider subscribing. And if, if you're not, you know, if you don't want to subscribe, that's cool too. If you could just take some time out and, and just take a, a look and, and see what we're doing, uh, I'd, I'd appreciate that as well. So again, Quarks and Crypto, it's going to be on Pi Day, March 14. Uh, this coming Tuesday at 8 p.m. Central. Hope to see you there. So now let's get back to the meat and the bones of what this conversation is going to be about, and that is uh, Vulcan Trace. I've included a link uh, in the description area below to Vulcan Trace. I also have it on screen here if you want to um, uh, take a look at it for yourself if you haven't already. Um, you know, full disclosure, I am not a blockchain expert, not by any means. This is my first uh, rodeo as it relates to um, being a part of a launching blockchain. So there's a lot of learning going on that I'm doing. And this is part of that process. I learn by getting involved, being hands on. I do my research. I read things and, and watch videos, et cetera, et cetera. But um, I, I get the most out of just getting my hands dirty and, you know, putting my hands in the dirt. So uh, this is part of that process. Uh, so this video is probably going to be um, a lengthy one, I think in maybe 15 minutes plus. So, you know, um, appreciate your um, your time and attention should you you watch the whole thing or just parts of it uh, and uh, again I'll ask if you are a blockchain expert if I haven't asked this already if you are a blockchain expert uh, would like some opinions and uh, commentary thoughts and answers because I'm gonna have some questions here and there's some things that I think I know that I'm gonna say and uh, if I got that incorrect I, I, I want to make sure that I'm being corrected and, and giving the most uh, accurate information that I possibly can and things do change. So uh, what I think I know may be dated uh, or may have uh, 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 evolved some. So I appreciate that as well. So before we get started again, um, if you want to join um, the testnet uh, in your wallet or, or be a part of testnet, uh, here's the address uh, i'm going to show how i went about it uh, so who's part of the vulcan community has several videos and i'll put put those in the link and uh, put those links in the description area below as well uh, on how to connect your wallet to testnet using uh, metamask uh, trust wallet and i believe SafePal. but i'm going to show what i did and i'm using a metamask wallet and i'm using a test wallet by the way so that's that's another thing that i'm doing i don't have this connected to any of the main wallets that i do transactions with i am i've set up a test wallet uh for uh, this and some other purposes so I, i'm just using this as part of that process so uh, if you go to that vulcan trace site that i've 
put uh, in, in the description area. Um, and I had showing on screen for a moment. Uh, if you go to the very bottom, you have this option here to add Vulkan to MetaMask. Click that, you see I've got a message here saying that I'm already connected, but if you're not connected, it will walk you through the steps to get connected. So it was a very simple process, uh, quick and easy, uh, really, really, uh, you know, simplistic. So, so nothing, nothing doing there. Um, I'm going to go over the graph here. So it looks like, you know, we see, we have an opportunity to see how, how many daily transactions we have. Uh, the total doesn't give amounts right now, but, uh, maybe they'll be adding that, you know, kind of as a bullet point in the details. Uh, we can see what our gas tracking is and that's pretty cool. So we see our average and what it costs to do a fast uh, transaction and how much it costs for a slow transaction. Uh, we also have the daily transactions, which right now is set to zero, um, likely because it's a very, just, just right now, it's just a low number of transactions. I, I do expect that to increase as uh, when the faucet's turned on and we're able to really go in here and, and pressure test this thing. Um, average block time so far has been four seconds. Total number of transactions is seven. Total blocks is 235,648 and counting. Already went up one. And the wallet address is, is uh, 191, which uh, again, is pretty cool because when I looked at this this morning, I think we were at about 190. So someone else has added their wallet to test that. So great. Uh, right below this, we can see blocks and we can see like real time that blocks are being created. It looks like these blocks are being created by miners. Um, I am going to make an assumption here that once the nodes are online, I believe nodes are going to be creating uh, blocks as well. So again, blockchain experts, correct me if I'm wrong in saying that. And here we can see our list of transactions, of course. So I'm not really going to go over that in much detail. Uh, let's look at the menus. Uh, so for menus, we have a sub menu of blocks and under blocks, we have blocks, uncles, forked blocks. Let's look at blocks. All right. So these are the blocks that have been created um, that we saw the summary in the previous page. So these are those blocks and um, you can see the minor address. I'm assuming this is the minor address that is generating these blocks. Yep, and we can see how many blocks are validated. So this is pretty cool. This is pretty cool, I like that. So those are blocks. Uh, let's go to uncles. Um, I didn't know what an uncle was. Didn't know what an uncle was until I saw this. Um, and I did some research and my understanding of an uncle, just based on the things I read is when blocks are being created, there could be instances where one or more blocks are being created, uh, at the same time to be written on the blockchain, but only one block at a time can be written on the blockchain. So those blocks that aren't written on the blockchain when you know multiple blocks are, are trying to write to it, those that don't make the cut essentially um, are referred to as uncles. Um, uncles is not a Vulcan name invention. Um, I don't exactly recall exactly where uh, that term generated from or where that term came from, uh, but it is related somehow to um, Bitcoin. And, um, I, I just don't, I'm, I'm, I'm coming out of loss here on, on, on that. I, I've got some notes written down somewhere, but I, I don't have them in front of me, but, um, it is somehow uh, th this whole idea or concept of uncles. Uh, there is a different name for it. There's multiple names for it actually, uh, in the ether, uh, scan or Ethereum world, I believe uncles are referred to as orphans. Uh, so you have orphans and you have uncles. Um, so, um, again, blockchain experts, please correct me if I'm wrong, but that's my understanding. Uh, I'm not quite clear what happens after the fact, like, you know, I, I don't know that this necessarily means it's a failed transaction, but it's something there where maybe that block is written somewhere else at another point in time. I, I haven't done a, a deeper dive yet into that, but at a high level, 
I, I can say that just based on what I understand, an uncle is a, um, a blockchain writing event that occurs when uh, multiple blocks are making an attempt to write or, you know, put itself in the log of, of blockchains, uh, in the log on the blockchain, and, um, you know, only one makes the cut initially. So, uh, again, that's something to, uh, you might want to do some research on. Uh, forked blocks. Don't know what a forked block is. Hadn't gotten a chance to really look at that yet, but let's see if we have any forked blocks that are being reported. No, no forked blocks reported. Um, not even going to assume what that is. Uh, re it has uh, reorgs here in parentheses. Not sure what this is. Um, yeah, I'm just going to leave that alone. I, I, that, that's one where I'm definitely going to need some research to get some answers to on fork blocks. Uh, transactions, let's look at transactions that are validated. All right, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven validated transactions and that aligns to uh, what we saw on um, the main page when we saw in the, the summary report, there were seven transactions. So that's good. Um, this transaction, there, there was a transaction here where it looks like a transfer of 10,000 Vulcan occurred. That's a nice Vulcan amount. I'd like to have 10,000 Vulcan uh, one of these days. Uh, actually, I think I may have a little bit more than that when we go live. Um, 1,000 Vulcan, this was a transfer here and we look at the fees too right so the fees 0. 0.00021 to transfer 10,000 Vulcan not too shabby uh, same amount here uh, this transaction though this must have been like a like a fractional transaction but the cost of that transaction seemed to be a bit more um, almost by half so it's like 1.5 times the, the previous transactions, uh, which those previous transactions had a higher amount. So I wonder what drove that. Maybe it was timing or something to that effect. Who knows? Uh, definitely like to get some understanding of that. So, you know, if we're interacting every day and if you got a small bag, um, this, this is what this looks like to me. I'm not saying that this is what's going to happen. So if it's not a FUD situation. Please don't, don't, don't uh, come at me. But, um, I'm just making, uh, I do have a question here because if you have a small bag and you're making small transactions, uh, are you going to be penalized more uh, in fees? So it, it kind of doesn't look like that as I look throughout the rest of these transactions. So here we have another 10,000 Vulcan transaction transfer and uh, that was a 0. 0.00021 fee, uh, transaction fee kind of aligns to the first two. And we have another one, this is five Vulcan. And that too uh, received uh, about the same amount. And then we have 10, uh, a 10 Vulcan transaction that had a, uh, what appears to be a lesser amount even. Is this, oh, that is more. This is uh, three zeros, not four zero. So, uh, you know, I'm just curious to know what's, what's driving the transaction fee. So that's that's a question. Wow, look at this. This is a huge transaction. So this transaction was a roughly 375 million Vulcan. Wow, I'd love to have 75 million Vulcan uh, on, uh, at, uh, on go live. 375 million Vulcan at $9. Wow, wow, wow. That is awesome. That would be awesome. Okay, so, you know, that's just a cursory review of validated transactions, and I'm looking in a different direction, so bear with me. I have a, a, another screen up that's uh, a little more easy on the eyes for me as I go through this process. Still learning how to do this YouTube thing, so I haven't gotten to my um, camera setup yet. and focus more on audio here recently. All right, so let's look at pending or pending transactions. Looks like there are none. So, okay, so there's no pending transactions. And uh, verified contracts. No verified contracts. Here, I think 
what we will see are um, contracts that are, you know, projects that are on the blockchain, like Kiwi Token, Cosmic Force, um, uh, I believe uh, uh, NR Legend and and uh, a couple of other guys there in the community are, are creating projects. So all the folks that are doing projects and putting those out, uh, Kryptonian, I think also has a project coming up. Um, I believe their contract information is going to be listed here. So again, blockchain experts, please validate what I'm saying. But that is my understanding based on what I have uh, researched so far uh, for verified contracts. And right now, we don't see any, but I do anticipate once the faucet is up and we look at, uh, well, tell you what, let's look at the roadmap. So the beta test net, See the bulk and trace without rebase, uh, gamma test net, bulk and faucet, bulk and trace with rebase, hyperverse relaunch. Uh, simulated light nodes, fixed select skyway partners, grant applications, upslide, developer onboarding. So I'm not seeing anything here on um, specifically about project testing maybe that's hyperverse uh, i don't know but uh again uh, that's that's something that i want to get some answers to i may have question ask some ask some questions to the community about that and if you're watching this and you have the answer just pop it in the comment section i appreciate it all right so let's go to tokens all all right so nothing under tokens uh, nothing under full and I kind of think again the tokens will be the um, the the token amounts that are not bull right so if you had Kiwi again using Kiwi token as an example cosmic force uh, etc uh, their tokens would show up uh, if you know you had a balance there uh, those would show or if they were they had balances on the blockchain those would show I'm, I'm assuming I'm assuming so please correct um so this is for vault so these are the vault addresses that are on the blockchain that are making transactions uh in testnet that have vault so this is our big bag did five transactions uh we have a couple of bags that haven't sent any transactions yet and um we've got these two transactions here as well. So we still have seven transactions. It aligns to uh, the previous two sections as, as well. So we're seeing seven transactions across the board. So that's cool. Uh, going into APIs. Uh, which API? All right, so this is GraphQL. So I think this is these are maybe queries where you can query um, the projects that you have to see if um, you know maybe this is, this is where you can go in and do like a specific project uh, reports. Um, as you can see, you can look at the value, the gas fees, the block numbers, uh, the hash, which is the uh, transaction identifier. Uh, so I'm thinking this will allow you to do some queries uh, to see more specifics related to a specific transaction. So again, blockchain experts, check me on that if I am wrong. RPC. So that. Um, this API is provided for developers transitioning their applications from Ether Scan to Block Scout to support Git and post request. So I think this is um, this is an interface. So this 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 is an application you know that allows uh, developers that are developing apps on Ether Scan that's probably already live and active. Um, if they want to port those into Vulkan, you know, go cross chain, if you will. Um, they can use this as a mechanism to do that. You will we'll be able to see if um, that, uh, you know, who that is and when that happened and, and, and what that process looked like. So again, blockchain experts, let me know if I'm wrong there. Uh, here is another 
API, and this one's ETH RPC API. And this API is provided to support some RPC methods in the exact format specified for Ethereum nodes, which can be found here. This is useful to allow sending requests to Block Scout without having to change anything about the request. However, in general, the custom RPC is recommended. Anything not in this list is not supported. Click on the method to be, take to, to be taken to the documentation for that method and check the notes section for any potential differences. So, okay, so it looks like this, uh, this API is, I guess, a quick route, you know, easier um, method of porting perhaps uh, any tokens or apps that are currently on the Ethereum uh, network over into Vulkan. Um, assuming it checks all the boxes for standardization uh, will get you over the hump and into into Vulcan. Uh, but it looks like it's recommended to do the custom RPC, which is what we covered uh, previously. So uh, anyone that uses or attempts to use uh, the quick route, we'll be able to see that there. So that could be helpful, I guess, if you have someone that really, really wants to get in the Vulcan uh, blockchain, which we do want that. And if they take uh, a quick route and there are some challenges, then, you know, um, we'll, we should be able to see that. And it may be, you know, some um, compatibility issues uh, that require some custom coding, which would require this custom RPC and you know, taking shortcuts aren't always the best thing to do, but um, looks like there's an opportunity to do that so long as um, some standards are being managed to, for those folks that are currently uh, uh, on the Ethereum network so again blockchain experts please check me and what i'm saying here this is what i think i know at this point in time i am still doing some research i am still learning all right so in the last area here is uh on the menu is vulcan don't know what this does i guess this is just letting us know that the blockchain is up um i think that's what this means it's green but i'm making an assumption here that everything's up the, the 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 blockchain is in green status so that's what we want to see all the time uh, i'm going to paste my wallet into the search field here I've done that before Let's see and this gives me some details on uh, my wallet i don't have any vol right now i'm going to change that once the faucet goes live uh so a balance is zero, zero transactions, no transfers, a zero gas used, a last balance update. What that is, let's click on that. It does. All right, so 42 minutes ago. Okay, so this is about the time I thought I added, oh, I added a different wallet. So yeah, so this is my second test wallet. So I did add this wallet. Um, 42 minutes ago. So maybe I am number 191. Uh, uh, I have corrected myself there. So I may be 191. Um, I don't call going through the process of adding it, but uh, it's 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 very possible because I do have uh, several test wallets on different systems. So I may have uh, added my previous test wallet to testnet in a different environment. But needless to say, here we are. Um, so it looks like the miner that managed my connection and my block producer successfully added me to the blockchain. So this is the miner that added me to the blockchain. Um, I'd like to get to know, you know, again, if you're a blockchain expert, in this context, is a miner the same thing as a node? Uh, I'd like to get an understanding of that. Uh, so you can see how many bytes were sent. I have my hash and parent hash. Difficulty was two. Block difficulty for the miner used to calibrate block generation time. Note constant and EOA based networks. Don't know what any of that means. So I'm going to do some research on that one. Um, total difficulty. You know, I don't even know what difficulty means in this context. Didn't have any gas. Uh, see a gas limit here and a nonce. Uh, see 64-bit hash of value. Verifying proof of work. Uh, 
there's no POA chains. Um, so, okay. So I think that's, that kind of summarizes it all at a high level. Again, I have more questions um, than, than uh, comments and suggestions in this one, but I just wanted to kind of go over uh, the Vulcan Trace. And again, if you want to take a look at it, uh, Vulcan Trace, you can find it here. Also have it in the description area below. Um, really, really excited still about the Vulcan blockchain and what it represents and, and uh, the things to come. And again, before I get out of here, just want to remind you all again about Quarks and Crypto. We're going to do this on Pi Day next Tuesday, March 14, 8 p.m. Central. Hope to see you there. Uh, if you found this helpful, please like, share, subscribe. I'm just doing my best to, to spread the word uh, out about Vulcan blockchain, the uh, first of its kind, layer one, auto staking, auto rebasing, auto compounding, auto deflationary, uh, just awesome, awesome blockchain that I really expect this thing is going to be within the top, top five, top three uh, of, of all blockchains really, really soon. So, um, I hope you are going to be a part of that journey with us. Uh, for those of us that are invested in this thing, we have some really high expectations. Brian has uh, not yet um, proven us uh, wrong in being excited about this. So I hope this is another uh, entry in that regard that this uh, thing will uh, definitely exceed our expectations. And uh, as uh, Plan B would say, uh, blow our socks off. So knock our socks off. So until next time, Mellifella is out. Thank you for watching. 